one of the biggest controversies of the games. Mate, we're just about to launch episode five, buddy. I'm really struggling on the spaces between the segments. Oh, yeah, Mossy, what do you need is a uh, segue. Well, mate, wasn't that all fantastic over there? Oh, mate, uh, sensational segues. All, all everyone's been talking about across the globe. Uh, and, yeah, Usain Bolt, the world's fastest man, but he's not the world's uh, most segue-resistant man, as we found out there. But, Mossy, there's more to that story. Uh, yes, everyone's seen the clip, but they may not have seen the, how it ended. And it was a happy ending indeed. The cameraman from uh, the Chinese channel CCTV, Song Tao, uh, managed to sidle up next to Usain after the medal ceremony for the 200 metres and present him with a little lucky red bracelet and uh, said, very sorry Usain, I won't do it again. And uh, would you accept this little gift? So, Mossy, great to know that there was a happy ending, but um, well, it, it, it unfolded a little bit more from that. People won't know this. I was actually over there, Usain Bolt on camera as a gentleman, and uh, he said, thank you very much, Song. Uh, I accept your gift. And, uh, and then later on, he just went, oh, piece of crap, and threw it away. And actually, I picked it up. And it's not a wristband. It's not a bracelet. It's a headband, actually, a red headband. This is it here. So uh, yeah, it's traveled a long way. And uh, mate, that's the end of that story. So segues, uh, red headbands, China, the bird's nest. It's been a huge week, and we'll, we haven't got enough time to unpack the bird's nest and the world champs on today's show. You can catch that over on mossyandrobbo.com, an entirely separate show, Best of the Nest. Mate, I'll tell you what, we've been uh, covering off the athletics. There's been so much going off in sport, so why don't we touch base with Cal? Oh, boys. Oh, look, sorry, you've just got me in between. I'm just practicing for a future Olympic sport. Yes, it's guess who. It could be even this one. We could have Yahtzee. We could have Twister. Yes, boys, there are some big developments that are happening for possible future sports, but we'll get to that in just a minute. Because first, the big news is that the Commonwealth Games are going to South Africa. That's right. In 2022, in a one-horse race, Durban has been announced as the winner, and they will host the Commonwealth Games in 2022. In 2024, the Olympic Games, LA, have put their hand up for the US bid after Boston went down the toilet. Now... Talking about being on top of a podium, the opposite ends of this, Michael Rogers, he finished fourth 11 years ago, but he's now been awarded a bronze medal in the men's individual time trial. Can you believe it? A decade after he's been on the medal ceremony with all the big wigs over there at the IOC. Congratulations to Mick, o Mick Rogers, the Australian cyclist. Uh, he's now boosted us up to third overall on that medal tally from 11 years ago. In, Ath in Athens. Now over to England, and yes, it's true, we've won the Ashes on English soil. It wasn't the men, it was the women. It was the Southern Stars, and congratulations to the girls who show the boys how to get it done over there in England. And yes, future Olympic sports, boys, we were talking about it just before. First up, we have the Greasy Pole in Malta. We've got bog snorkeling in Wales. Believe it or not, we've got gravy wrestling in England. But of course the e-games as well, so it might not necessarily be the board games, we might have a little bit of PlayStation 2, or of course, a little bit of Game Boy. Let's wind back the clock and I'm just going to get a bit of practice in. So there Robbo, the biggest news mate, Durban 2022, well, it's been a tight race. It, well it has, look I've been on the Durban 2022 campaign ever since it was announced they were going to uh, bid for the games. Um, Don the Jumper, I've worn this today. Fingers were crossed, Mossy, I've got to say. It was nervous, nervous moments for everyone involved with the bid because um, it was Durban and uh, who else was... Uh, it was it? Um, Durban. The right, and so it was Durban v Durban and uh, look... I think it was South Durban v South Durban. Well, they Durban. Too. KwaZulu Natal is the province. But yeah, look, they've got, they've got it, they've got the gig and look, we saw scenes over there. I actually got over there um, and celebrated with them and you can see here... <laughs> Look, it's just great to hear the South Africans breaking into song and dance in celebration on uh, on the news. And uh, it's great to get the support of the Durban 2022 uh, organising committee. They've already thanked us for our support. And Mossy, uh, Durban, what comes to mind when uh, when I say the word Durban? Well, there's a couple of things that come to mind, Robbo. And uh, let's just go back to the history of Durban. It yes. Was back in 1497, it was a Portuguese sailor by the name of Vasco de Gamas who, who launched himself in. He thought, gee, there's a lot of water here. And he thought, gee, it looks a lot like Rio. And he actually named it Rio de Natal. 
Now, Natal, as you know, you're very fluent in Portuguese, means... Well, I've heard it means Christmas. Absolutely. It's Christmas <laughs> holiday. So, so all around Christmas over there. The other things that come to mind, mate, so it's got a lot of water, so it's got a port, heaps of drugs over there, and now it's got the Commonwealth Games. Well, it does. And very similar to uh, the other city, which is all about the Commonwealth Games, which is the Gold Coast. I've been to Durban, Mossy. It's very much South Africa's answer to the Gold Coast. Uh, <laughs> and what has the Gold Coast got? Well... They've got uh, theme parks, slippery dips, water slides, and a whole bunch Gary of... Gary Ablett. Gary Ablett, uh, and a whole bunch of sharks. Now, Durban, Indian Ocean, brown, brackish, murky waters, there's no shortage of sharks over there. In fact, they've named their footy, their rugby team, the uh, the Durban the Sharks. And so, I think, Schooly the Bull Shark, well, if he doesn't get the gig at uh, as mascot for Gold Coast 2018... Durban 2022, he's an absolute shoe and I've got the uh, organising committee, they've already locked that in for me. Now, let's turn our attention to another big games. We're talking 2020, we're talking Tokyo. We're still livid about the fact that Dubbo didn't get these games, but they'll be bidding for the 2024. Mate, it was time for them to look at a logo. And, uh, mate, were you surprised, shocked, or were you excited by the logo that was put out there by the Tokyo 2020 bid? Look, I loved it. It was sophisticated. It was classy, cutting edge. All the things that encapsulate uh, the Japan bid and, and Tokyo in particular. Uh, and hats off to Kenjiro Sano. However, uh, Kenny, as he's known to his mates, uh, well, his little secret's been found out just this week, Mossy. All he did uh, is he went on to Google Logos and he found this lovely logo that had a T on it. looked uh, pretty nice and it was actually the logo from the Belgian theatre company and uh, they haven't really responded that well to the fact that he's ripped off their logo. They've come out and wanted to sue him and uh, the Tokyo Olympic uh, movement has got egg on its face and they've had to renege the, the logo. Well, apparently he went and found the one he thought was the ugliest logo in the world that no one would be able to spot and put it out there. It is a terrible logo. And he, as we said there, Kenny, national disgrace. They're, they're, I won't say what they're talking about doing to him, but uh, yeah, not good things. Now, and in other news, Robo Tokyo 2020, they have an issue, mate. The National Stadium was going to host the uh, opening and closing ceremony. It was going to host the athletics and also the fencing parts of the modern pentathlon yep. as well. Yep. Mate, it's not good enough. It's shonky. They've decided they're actually going to rip up this $2 billion plan the plan costs $2 billion. They're going to have to start again, mate. This doesn't have ramifications just for the Olympics. It's also for the rugby. Well, if they're not already sharpening the samurai for Kenny, because I believe Kenny's behind the plans for the stadium as well, <laughs> uh, he'll be very, very uh, nervous, and he's going to bed with sweaty palms tonight. I just hope they can sort it out. Uh, look, it's looking like a farce, and it's looking like Dubbo should have got the bid originally. We, we said all along the slogan for Dubbo was, you're in safe hands, uh, Tokyo. Look, they'll have a nuclear disaster next week, uh, the way it's all going. So I'm very, very nervous, Mossy, and I think Dubbo, stay, uh, keep the scaffolders handy. I was say, should we keep the, the secret alive that every stadium is going to be made from scaffolding? <laughs> exactly. Well, that's, that's the plans, and look, they're working towards 2024, but I think the way it's going, they'll have to uh, be using their, their stadiums in 2020. So we'll see how that one goes. Over in the cycling, Robbo, Michael Rogers got some fantastic news this week when he picked up his phone and there was an SMS for him. Yeah, John Coates, uh, head of the AOC, said, uh, Dodger, I've got something for you, mate. It's a bronze medal. Uh, you've been elevated up the, up the ranks. Turns out uh, there's a bit of a doping issue by one of the dopes. In, Drugs. Uh, They're everywhere, aren't well, they? Well, they, well, they were. They are big in Athens. And 2004... Uh, where Rogers came fourth in the time trial. Look, one of Australia's greatest ever cyclists and time trialists. Uh, he now has his bronze medal, and he's tucked that up. And he's actually sent it over for us uh, here. We've got it on the show. So that's the bronze that uh, that Mick Rogers has won. And um, look, great to see that the the injustice has been corrected. Mossy and Dodger finally gets his medal. Mate, it has massive ramification for the, the tilt because we know the chef de mission who was the AOC president, John Coates. Well, he was the chef de mission at 2004 Athens Olympics, mate. He was in the spotlight at the end of that for not getting enough medals. Well, now we've got one more now. And look, at it, it's who knows where this is going to end, Moss. If we look at the medal table here, uh, we're currently sitting in fourth place. Well, we've crept up by one more. I think it's a total of 51 medals now. Uh, if this keeps going, look, we'll take on third place, second place. We might even top it. So uh, stay tuned, Aussies. If you medaled at Athens... Or if you came fourth, fifth, or sixth, a uh, bit outside, you might be in the mix, and John Coates could be sending you a text very soon. Absolutely. 
Now, as we turn our attention, mate, to uh, team names. Now, last week mm. we looked at Canoeing Australia, yes. which interestingly enough has anything to do with a paddle. We've got canoeing, we've got kayaking. Now even stand-up paddleboarding comes in there as well. Well, it's huge. I jumped onto uh, Canoeing Australia's website. There's so much sprinting, slalom. Um, as you say, Mossy, it's just, it's just expanding massively. But I couldn't see anywhere. I just had to make sure. Was there a team name anywhere on the website? I couldn't see one at all, Mossy. Um, I think what they need is one single name to bring all those teams together, unify the sport, and watch it uh, advance. And so, mate, we've had a bit of uh, people riding in this week. Well, that's right. We talked about it on last week's show. That, you know, the fact is when I think about kayaking, when I think about canoeing, I think about paddling, I think about creeks, and I think about platypus. And, of course, the platypus being a very, very angry little uh, sea creature or river you, creature. You said it could kill people. It does. It kills people. Goodness. It's, uh, more killings by a platypus than by sharks. Wow. That may or may not be fact. Now... So we came up with combining uh, the platypus and also looking at the Australian meat pies. They call them the platter pies. But, mate, there's been some big ones coming on social media. Yeah, we've what do you got? got? Um, mate, we've got canoodling. Ah, the canoodlers. I like that. We've got uh, the canoe roos. Yes. That's that, original. I haven't that, heard anyone go with the roos. That, that makes sense. The canoe, canoe roos or canoe roos. That's good. The two more, mate. We've got the, the paddle pusses. Yes, paddle pusses. Right, that's good. And you'll like this one, mate. The, uh, the paddle pie. Paddle pie. Paddle pie, and look, why not a paddle pop as well? Australia, very famous in Australia. Um, so, look, I'm loving that. I don't mind the great Aussie paddlers as well, Mossy. So, look, if you canoeing Australia, I know you're watching. If there's not something there that's capturing your hearts and minds, well, look, we'll give up now. Um, I think the platypuses, uh, paddle pusses, whatever it is, Mossy, we'll come up with that. And um, I'll have be on the phone with Kitty Chiller very soon just to confirm that. She's over in Rio at the moment where they've got uh, the sprints, for the canoeists, they're doing test events this weekend. Kenny Wallace, the walrus, he'll be in action and uh, Kitty will be over there cheering them on. And they'll be talking in the team huddles before that uh, event. Mossy and Robbo, they're coming up with a name for us. Don't worry, Kenny. Don't worry, guys. We'll get this sorted for you. So watch this space. We expect uh, John Coates will announce that very soon. And in Rio, Mossy, uh, big, big news. It's only one year to go uh, until the Paralympic Games over there in Rio. And it's going to be very exciting. And Mossy, a very exciting way that they're they're celebrating the one year to go party. Well, they're having a, a showdown, a smackdown, if you like. They want to find the world's fastest para athlete over 100 metres, men's and women's. And we're, they're sending over Evan O'Hanlon, Australia's most decorated uh, short sprint Paralympian. And we call him the Big O. Uh, some people call him Evans Above. But uh, he's going to go over there, and I'm <laughs> confident. He's, yeah. he's also a barista, mate. He's oh, the fastest he's barista in the best world. Best coffee in, in Canberra. So you want to check that out. And uh, look, all the best to Evan. And uh, look, we're going to be having a party next show, episode six. It'll be Paralympic party time with one year to go. We'll get Tom, the mascot. He'll be involved. And, mate, I can't wait for that. And, of course, Robbo, it's all fun and games. Until you get taken out from behind by a Chinaman on a Segway.